And welcome back to Let's Play Shin Megami Tensei Digital Devil Saga. Last time we had a double dose of bad things happening. First off, we fell in the trap in Manipura. And second of all, the cat is out of the bag regarding Sarah. She is a known known now. We're just going to tear through this random encounter and try to get back to base as quickly as we can. Heat uh, went ahead of us, so we're just going to do our best to try and catch up with him. Like we're over here. Now, off screen, uh, well, actually more, I'm talking about what I didn't do off screen. I considered grinding up some mantras for Gale, but I, I decided, nah, we'll save that for later, because later on, we're going to be getting a, another new character, and I'll have to definitely do some mantra grinding for him if I want him to be immediately usable, so I might as well just take care of that for Gale when we get there. But right now, the main goal is to return to Muladhara. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've definitely been had there. Did not do well to underestimate them. Certainly did not do well to uh, ignore Bat when he was clearly dissatisfied with us. Man, though, I can't believe he turned traitor on her, his leader and just got her killed like that. Alright, returning to Muladhara. Now, as soon as we get in here, talk to this guy. You seem to have a lot in common with Harley. But yes, Muladhara has been attacked while we were out, and many of our... Die again? What? Mother? You know, now that I think about it, we don't... I haven't really seen anybody with, like, families or anything in the junkyard. What about her? Is she okay? Alright, so it looks like not everyone has died. It's hard to tell who has actually survived and who's just in mortal pain. Better get back to the command room since that's where we left Sarah and Cielo. Looks like we got quite a bit of blood splattered around the base now. And yeah, it'll stay like that for the rest of the game. All right, let's see what's going on in the strategy room. Why the hell couldn't you protect one girl? Sorry, I... <clears throat> Why are you so concerned with Sarah? You do not know, do you? I'll kill you! <clears throat> That's enough! It is not just heat. You have all changed since Sarah arrived. You may be confused, but do not blame Cielo. Cute little speech. But what about you, huh? I have not changed. I am myself. The solution lies in Sarah's lost memories. Instead of simply lashing out, let us think. Where is Sarah? They allowed you to live in order to give us that information. Where is she? The northern ruins at coordinate 136. Heat! He cannot succeed alone. We should follow. I... <clears throat> I want to come along too! I gotta redeem myself for all this! You should rest here. You won't be much help if you're hurt. Was it just me, or did, uh, did Cielo's voice change a little at the end there? Sounds like he, uh, picked up a bit of an accent. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I hope you like, uh, <laughs> bad fake Jamaican accents, because Cielo will give us plenty of that throughout both of these games. <laughs> anyway, now we have our next destination, coordinate 136, as Argelo re reaffirms for us here. And we already know this is a trap, but it's not like we have much choice. Looks like our guys are getting back on their feet here. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this has been quite a few days. Don't worry, you're, you're not a named character, so you don't have to worry about actually getting into any battles. But I wonder what's waiting for us at coordinate 136. Cielo said it was a type of ruins, but, well... Uh, not to put too fine a point on, most of the junkyard is in a ruin-like state, so... Curious to see what exactly kind of ruins we're looking at here. Hey, you're a duo now. Uh, love truly can bloom on the battlefield, can it? Anyway, let's get on out of here. We gotta go rescue Sarah. Now that we've learned from Cielo, coordinate 136 is on the map, and this is our next major dungeon. It's a pretty lengthy one, and fairly involved, too. Alright. Gail, what's the status report? Is this an amusement park? Well, it's a place to have fun. Of course you don't comprehend. Gale doesn't comprehend a lot of things. He's a very cold and logical individual. Actually, let's uh, just do a quick party rearrangement. Gonna put heat in the middle, put surf down there. Now, you remember, I specifically went out of the way to get heat the holy beast mantra, and as you can see, didn't have any AP when he left the party, but now it has been mastered. And, <clears throat> ah, sorry, just got something in my throat here. Mm -mm -mm. He has a lot of good hunt skills, and I'm gonna start setting that stuff. So first off, we wanna set AP Divide. AP Divide is a very broken skill in this game. Uh, if Heat successfully hunts an enemy, the AP he gets, a little bit of that will go to his party members. The reason this is broken is because the AP provided from AP Divide is actually more than you would have gotten if you just killed them normally. So there is no reason not to, uh, just use AP Divide hunting characters to uh, get all your AP. It's just straightforwardly more effective than trying to, uh, like, not divvy up the AP through hunting and just get it through killing. You actually get very little AP through just killing enemies in this game. The Oh, and one more thing about AP Divide. It actually got nerfed hardcore in Digital Devil Saga 2, and it actually does work like you expect. It provides considerably less uh, than just killing the enemies normally. The other ability we've got is Iron Stomach, which uh, makes your character immune to stomach aches. Given how frequently those have been a thorn in my side, that is very handy. Next up, we got the upgraded Hunt Skill Consume, which is basically about as strong as a regular attack, I think, but way better than Devour, which is half as strong as that. And let's see. Anything else I want to get on the heat right now? Uh, not at the moment. Uh... Just because Gale's in the party, I want to take a look at what he's got. And what does... Uh, we'll throw on Bufu. We won't need Tarunda for a while. And you know what? Let's, uh... Let's get rid of Taunt. Mm. Nah, nah, I'll pass on that for now. That should be good with what we got. Alright, enough uh, beating around the bush. Let's get into the entrance. Hey, 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 how'd you get in here, little kitty cat? Sorry, my little friend. The guard not one let us outside this room. Hey, little help, please? If I open this door, Gale will eat me alive. It isn't me. It's, a. Uh... The cat! The cat's doing it! I think he wants to go outside. The cat? You mean... 
A cat cat? Yeah, that cat. Oh, he's so cute. Come on, let him out. Nice work, little bro. Hey, where are you going? So yes, uh, coordinate 136 is in fact a kind of bootleg Disneyland attraction. And of course it is crawling with solids right now. Fomorians, these guys are weak to Zeo. Remember that much? Let's see here. I don't have uh, access to multi-type videos from that. So let's uh, have Surf and Heat do this. Okay, that one's afraid. Uh, ah. Yeah, it doesn't look like the turn order is in our favor, but I'm actually going to let this guy survive. He voids the lack, but we don't care about that. That's essentially a waste of his turn. And let's consume him. Much better damage than Devour would do. But yeah, let's just uh, check out AP Divide. Get splits up between everybody. Very nice. And yes, uh, I will be having Heat hunt as much as possible, since he's the only one who has it at this point. And that'll just get more AP going around in general. Destiny lands. And uh, these placards just repeat the story from the broadcast that we heard. Uh, fun fact, even though those uh, static broadcasts are cutscenes, more or less, because they're rendered in-engine, you actually cannot skip them. <laughs> kind of annoying on repeat playthroughs, honestly, because you have to hear this extremely generic story every time you come through the game. Alright, I actually do want Surf to start working on Fire Leader, and probably start working him towards Ice Leader also. Speaking of that, we're gonna put Heat back onto Ice Leader now that Holy Beast is mastered, so that he can uh, finish that off. Since we paid for it, don't have to buy it again. And he'll get that maxed out pretty quickly, because at this point, uh, the AP we're going to be getting will be doing pretty good for these three-star mantras. And let's see, Gale. Let's see. Yeah, I will have him work on Earth Temple, actually. Eventually, I'll have him start working on some physical skills so that he can start contributing in that way. But for right now, we'll just uh, get him what's most useful. Okay. And besides, his magic is ever so slightly higher at this point anyway, so he's probably better off just using spells. We will get to a point where we'll get some pretty quality uh, physical skills and... This story took place not long ago. In a certain kingdom, there lived a beautiful princess with mysterious powers. Her powers were very special, for they protected the country and drove away hardship. However, one day an evil being captured the princess and planned to use her powers for evil. She was imprisoned high up in a tall tower. In a neighboring kingdom, there lived two princes who happened to be close friends of the princess. Their personalities were exact opposites of one another. One prince was always kind. The other was brash and took a liking to violence. Thus, behind their backs, People began calling them the Good Prince and the Evil Prince. In fact, the princess was secretly in love with the Good Prince. You know, getting interrupted there uh, made me lose my train of thought. I was talking about physical skills. Well, whatever. Anyways, that princess looks kind of familiar. Hmm. Oh, I'm sure that means nothing. Oh, the painting's talking to us. Hmm, Twinkle Bell, you say? Uh. And by people behind those doors, she of course means paintings. More of those. No, no. 
Ah, oh, don't be like that. Why, why do you have to have such a defeatist attitude? Anyways, we're just gonna... Oh, what do we got here? More Fomorians. Eh, we'll just, uh, take these guys down. Let's see if we can't get an Afraid here. Just so I can... Okay, that, that's good enough. Consume should be able to kill off of that. Oh, wow. Well, if that's the case, we'll have uh, Gale devour this guy. And then Heat. We'll just heat this guy right up. There we go. Now we got a lot of AP going around. Very good. Alrighty, anyways, let's just blow right on past Twinkle Bell and... Yeah. Anyways, if you decide to walk past her instead of talking to her, she'll just give you the exposition. But not before getting really annoyed. Well, nice to meet you too, I guess. Loves. Ah, okay. Hmm. Despite what she says, we actually cannot talk to the evil prince, though we will get into trouble if we encounter him. Okay. Well, these paintings are the people that we can talk to, and they give us hints. What have you got to say? Slowly make haste, eh? Hey, I guess I can do that. Hey, now, that is very narrow-minded of you. But what he's trying to say there is that there's a mechanic to this that's functionally the same as the uh, yellow-eyed statues from the previous dungeon. Now, we'll see a portrait over there, and it looks like a blue prince, but if we get close, he slowly starts turning red. Now, what happens if we walk in front of the red prince? Well, he turns deep crimson, and then we get dropped below. But we got skeletons to talk to, at least. <laughs> And yes, there are skeletons to talk to in every, uh, prison chamber, and they all make terrible puns, just like that. But the reason I fell down this one specifically is to get this magic noise. And what do we got in the basement here? Baphomets! These guys are weak to Hama. Unfortunately, I deselected Hama. Oof, that's a little rough, but oh well. Ooh, these guys can curse us, and I forgot to get some discurses. Oh well, we can manage. You guys are gonna regret this. Alright, let's uh, do a Xanma on this guy. Not bad. And let's see if we can't consume him. Yes! There we go. Very good power on that. And we'll just hit this guy with Tarazi. Oh, hey, I can do another consume. Oof, here comes Mudo, and ah! Uh... Okay, I actually have a way to deal with that that won't uh, cost Gale any experience. And yeah, dead characters don't get any experience, don't get any AP. Though they do revive with 1 HP after the battle is over, so that's nice. Let's get that guy consumed, and there we go. But yeah, consume, much more effective than devour. We can actually kill with it and reap some serious benefits from it. Now, if I get the opportunity, uh, because as you can tell, they're going to fall behind as uh, heat really rockets ahead on AP, uh, I'll have uh, Gale and Surf hunt on occasion, but... But, for the most part, I'm just going to have Heat devour everything, since that spreads more AP around than just killing the enemies. I was just looking around, because in a couple of those chambers, you'll find additional paintings who also stay stuff, but... Eh. Now, there are plenty of treasures located in these trap areas. Uh, six altogether. Five, actually. I'll just talk through this so I can keep my train of thought going. But, uh, some of them genuinely aren't worth it. Like, there's a couple moldy rolls mixed in there, which I don't care about, obviously. So, we're just gonna get the magic noise, since that's the only one that I super care about. And then, when I'm coming back through the area, I'll get the other triggers that I actually care about. Let's take this guy down. Very nice. Uh, looks like that guy's a little resistant to that. Yeah, we'll just kill this guy. Don't really feel like messing around and having him having me to waste another revival bead. There we go. Really wanted to get uh, Buffala onto Heat so that we have that little bit of coverage for an upcoming fight. Heat's far from the best user of it, but eh, he'll make do. Yeah, I'm not going to be using Vileblade through this area since I'm just going to be having him hunt a lot. The unfortunate thing with 
uh, AP divide and iron stomach taking up two skill slots. Is that. Hey, new enemies, Opsaurus. Uh, I believe they're weak to fire? Mm. Ah, what the heck, I got the spyglass. I gotta use that more. Let's just take a look at these guys. Yes, fire. Oh, hey, we got the Mabufala combo now. We're gonna use Miragi, though. Like I said, if the Surf gets an opportunity to hunt, we're definitely going to take it. Let's just see if we can finish them off with Shockwave. Hopefully these guys don't have eternal death. That would be unfortunate. Alright, power this. Oh, that didn't work. Yeah, so making this fight take longer than it needs to. And that makes me furious. Yeah, right, Heat, just, uh, om nom nom once again. Apologies if that gets annoying, as I keep saying, but it's just the best way for me to refer to it. It's a very handy mnemonic. But yeah, the other treasure that I care about in the portrait maze, uh, there's a magic noise under one of the traps, or not a magic noise, MP noise under one of the traps, and there is also a chakra pot. But we can come back for those after we finish the dungeon. Alright, once again, we just gotta switch our mantras up. Get Ice Leader switched off for something else. Let's see here. I will... Actually, let's just uh, have Heat. What have we got here on physicals? We'll uh, work on Priestess now. Comatose is a pretty strong attack, and he does need a good thing to whack the enemy upside the head with. So we'll go with that. Plus, I wouldn't mind if he was working on a mantra that's a little slower than what uh, Gale and Surf are working on, so that... Heat doesn't get too far ahead on skills. Definitely don't have the finances to support that at this point. Oh, ambushed by a brand spanking new enemy. Well, here's Gale's gun. He's got an assault rifle, and it deals a random number of hits. I believe one to three. Uh, distributed amongst brand enemies. It's uh, not that good. <laughs> Honestly, uh, only Surf really has the notable gun damage in this game. Argilla is pretty close, but it's her uh, sniper rifle is much weaker than you'd expect it to be. Okay, let's go for the consume again. Okay, should be able to devour him this time. Get in the belly, Unicorn. Uh, the Unicorns are weak to Mudo, and I think one other thing. I think I'll spy glass them next time we run into them. That time I just went for that because, well, we were ambushed and I couldn't do that straight away anyway. The thing that uh, AP Divide will come really in handy for is, of course, field hunts, where I have to worry less about dividing those up evenly. Now, I'm just going to take the route through this maze to complete it as efficiently as possible. And if I remember correctly, we want to take this door next. Then, don't want to go right immediately because that leads to another red portrait. Uh, and if you've noticed, the doors are actually disappearing behind us. Uh, that is also true of the trap or the prison area that we uh, got dropped into. Uh, you get dropped in there and the doors disappear behind you when you leave the cells. So it is necessary to keep getting dropped down there through these traps to actually get the treasures. Okay, another trap portrait over there. Now, the Good Prince is actually on the right set of hallways, but any way that we can go from there, uh, or, I, I butchered that, but look at the map, uh, there was another entryway to the right in the central chamber. Uh, the Good Prince is on that side, but any way leading from there, from that doorway, uh, that leads to a uh, dead end, or a trap. So we actually do have to wrap all the way around. I actually made a slight mistake. Uh, unicorns, they are in fact only weak to instant death. Uh, I mean death type magic. As a matter of fact, I may as well equip that. Let's see. Mm, we're not going to need force repel, so we'll just set that out. Yeah, let's open up this door. Now, this portrait right here, this is our good prince. As you can probably tell, because he's not flanked by anything. But we'll just want to open this node real quick. One of the hints actually tells you that the good prince is right by the treasure chest, but it's kind of a meaningless hint because to get to this one, you have to go the right way the whole time anyway. But as you can see, he becomes a much more vivid blue when we get close.
<laughs> he wants to go on a date. How heartwarming. Alright, but we've got his message, so now we just head on back. And thankfully, this little path right here will take us right back to where we need to be. Now, like I said, there's a couple treasures that I do want to get, but that's way too tedious to keep walking through. Oh, new enemy. Well, as I was going to say, this is way too tedious to keep walking through that dungeon on screen, so I'll just cut around when we actually uh, get to the point where I can easily get those treasures. But anyways, this is uh, Thoth, and as you can see, his unique thing is that when he goes first, he uses Rage to give himself two extra press turns. But he is also weak to instant death. Hmm. Don't exactly have the fire magic that I want, but it's not a big deal. Nice, thank you so much. Well, let's get on up here. Uh, I hope it works out for you too. I really do. Anyway, heading through here, looks like we got more yellow walls, I was going to say. Still no key for these, though. There's got to be something we can do about that. Hmm? Whoa! Ho, huh? The hip hop brothers, you say? Well, of course I want to keep listening. He ho? He ho! He ho! And we can just keep doing this all day, but no, no, we, we've got business to attend to at the top. You guys are supposed to be rapping, you got the weakest rhymes I've ever heard. Well, anyway, we got a bit of a mini-boss here. Jack Frost and Pyro Jack, the Jack Bros have returned once again, making their long-awaited appearance in this game, I'm sure. We're gonna pass and taunt real quick. These guys stick pretty much strictly to magic, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, the one thing you do have to worry about is the fact that, uh, as a matter of fact, they actually do have Daekun to get off uh, that defense debuff, but I am not too worried about that. Now, as you can see, He's got Buffalo there, so he can do more damage to Pyro Jack. It's not that much more than what Surf is capable with plain old Bufu. Yeah, so he Daekun does that off. Uh, now, the thing that you really have to watch out for... Oof, the thing you really have to watch out for with Jack Frost is that he knows Mediarama, and that's the big reason why I wanted to have access to Aguila at this point, so we could kill him that much faster, but it's not a big deal. I'm going to use Sandman on this guy. There we go. Yeah, this this is where Heat's magic is really... Heat's bad magic is really apparent. Let's see. I'm just going to want Media again real quick. And that's unfortunate, but manageable. As you can see, the Dekunda, this is a slight manipulation that we can do to make him waste his turn and not have to worry about Media Rama so much. Again, that is actually a valid thing to do, is to specifically debuff the enemy so that they'll react like that, and then you can exploit the free turn. Alright, Pyro Jack is down, so now time to just wail on Jack Frost. As a matter of fact, uh, if he does keep using Daekunda whenever we taunt him, we can catch him in a bit of a loop. Unfortunately, he's not going to fall for that constantly. That is okay. We're doing pretty fine, honestly. As long as he doesn't use Media Rama, we've got this fight in the bag, and even if he does, it's just a war of attrition at that point. Shame I couldn't have more fire magic, but oh well. God, heat magic is so bad. This is why I hate heat. <laughs> uh. Man, we didn't even max out our mantras from that. How disappointing. Eh, win's a win. And we didn't even kill them. Such language, young man. Ah, kick me while I'm down, why don't you? Uh, Hip Hop Brothers these days, am I right? And Jack Cell. This is a unique type of cell in this game. You get it from this fight specifically, and it is the only cell in the game that sells for more at minimum solar noise rather than maximum. I'm, I'm not really sure why they decided to do that, just for one anyway, I guess just to be goofy like that. 
Not that it's that much of a difference, really. Okay, so looks like we've got another sealed off gate here. Well, let's uh, let's just get right to it. Let's uh, blow past uh, Twinkle Bell again. However, in the same manner, the evil prince was madly in love with the princess. He often interfered with the princess and her love. He desperately craved her affections for himself. But try as he might, no matter what he did, her feelings for the good prince never changed. Hmm, the plot thickens. Seems like we have a bit of an unreciprocated attempt at a love triangle here. Anyways, as I was saying, let's just blow past right Twinkle Bell. Ah, you didn't have to call me a dork. Ah, listen, gather yourself, Twinkle Bell. Just tell us how it goes. That is an intricate name for that. Ah, that evil prince. Such a jerk. Alright, that sounds good to me. Just a little uh, mirror and light puzzle for us to solve. Let's do it. Sounds fun. Now, for once in these rooms, we actually do have things that could reasonably be described as treasure chests. Because, well, okay, they are just treasure chests. <laughs> anyway, I just realized that I never use that magic noise, so let's do that, shall we? There we go. That's the good stuff for Surf. Alright, so the way this works is that we got two switches on the princess. Let's just hit the right switch to turn her right, of course. That will turn it into this mirror. We turn this one, and it'll go to that corner mirror. Reflect it. There we go. Love conveyed. Prince is cured of his depression. And, once we do that... Well, first off, more areas open up, but also... Yeah! Yeah, if you tried to open the treasure chest before conveying the love, uh, they're just locked and you can't open them. Now we can open them and get some goodies. Let's see, in this one we've got a revival gem. Could always use more of those. Although, I'll be honest with you, uh, after a point those are going to become completely redundant. But I'll explain that when we get to that. And an organic cell. So, some pretty solid items in these treasure chests, and it's not like you can complete these pulses without getting the treasure chest, so this is basically just a little bit of busy work to get some goodies. But it's also what we need to do to move on, so whatever. As you can see... Oh, well, we can run into uh, Pyrodrax normally now. Well, we've got access to Mabufala, so let's hit him with that. Nice! Just killed them all in one go. As you can see, it's much better when he has uh, Surf's magic assisting the attack. Argilla learns a bunch of uh, skills there, but the most important one is Null Panic. Now, Null Panic's not too important right now, but the very floor after this one is going to be extremely important, so I'm just going to set that on her right now. Let's see, what's the least useful skill she has at the moment? I don't need Taunt on her since it's not something that she's working on right now, or not something that she really needs right now. So, we've got a red gate and a black gate to clear out, and the puzzles for doing so are right beyond that door. But, we've been doing a decent amount of work here. First off, let's uh, just change Argilla's mantras, get her working on something new. Oh, not Gale. I just forget the uh, order everybody's arranged in. Yes, yes, we've unlocked those for plenty of people at this point. Okay, I think what I'll have her work on next... Uh, we'll go with Dragon Lord. Not too, uh, not too concerned about what I have her work on. After that, I'll probably have her start working on boost magic just so I can get some buffs going. Tarakaja actually would be pretty handy at this point. Alright. But yeah, let's just save our game. And we'll continue exploring coordinate 136 in the next video. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you next time as well. Until then... Goodbye.